So welcome to your video on Exponential Growth and Decay, Part 2. Today we're going to focus on problems that give you the rate as a word. We start again with the same exponential model. We're always going to use the equation y equals a b to the x. And most of the pieces are going to mean the same thing that they did in our previous video. y is going to be your final amount, or the amount that you are looking for. a is the starting amount or the original amount, or the initial amount. B is the multiplier. But unlike last time, where you had to find the rate, and then change the rate to a decimal, and then do either 1 plus R or 1 minus R, our multiplier is going to be given to us by just reading the words in the problem. We're still going to break it up as far as growth and decay, but these are the words that you're typically going to see representing growth. You're going to see words like doubling, or tripling. So for example, maybe a population doubles every 10 years, or maybe something triples. You could even go as far as quadrupling or you know any of the other words, but I would say for the most part, the examples that you will be working with are pretty much going to stick to doubling and tripling. When we look at decay, you will be looking at things like half-life. If you are unfamiliar with half-life, um, you would probably need to talk to a biology teacher or a chemistry teacher. It's used very commonly to determine the age of fossils. So what happens is when an organism dies, they have all of the, the active carbon-14 left in their bodies. And then over time, as the bodies decay and the, the bones remain, um, there is still carbon-14 located in those bones. We know the half-life of carbon-14 it's roughly 6,000 years, and so every 6,000 years, half of that carbon-14 is going to disappear. So if scientists find a fossil, they can measure the amount of carbon-14 present in those bones, and then they can work backwards and determine how old the fossil is. So if you have more questions about half-life, we're happy to fill in those gaps, but that's basically what half-life is. Now, X is still going to represent the time but it's not necessarily how many years or how many days have passed. It's how many doubling, how many tripling, or how many half-life periods have gone by. So a lot of the values for x, you're just going to have to do some common sense reasoning to figure out what you should put in for x. I wanted to review the graphs just one more time. We are looking at growth and decay. And again, if your multiplier is larger than 1, so for example, doubling would be a multiplier of 2, tripling would be a multiplier of 3. You are going to see growth. And decay has to be a fraction or a decimal. So half-life, your multiplier would be a half. So clearly, you would see decay. Let's work through an example. We know that rabbits reproduce very quickly. And this particular population of rabbits triples every month. Assuming we start out with 100 rabbits, we would like you to do a couple of things working with the exponential growth model. The first thing we're going to do is just write the exponential equation that represents the situation. We start with the same exact equation, y equals a b to the x. In this case, a is going to represent 100 because we started out with 100 rabbits. b is going to be 3 because we saw that word triples. In fact, maybe we should highlight that for you. X, we have to figure out um, according to the examples. Um, for right now, we are just writing the general model, so we're going to leave X alone. X is actually going to be the variable. So the exponential equation that's going to describe this situation is Y equals 100 in parentheses 3 to the X. Now, in previous examples, we went ahead and filled in the x right away because we were looking for a specific answer, but this is just the general equation, and we can now use this to answer the rest of the question. So in part B, it says how many rabbits are there after four months? Well, the tripling period is every month. So if I'm looking for four months, then clearly there have been four tripling periods. So all we need to do is replace x with four. So we rewrite our equation, and then you would put this into your calculator. In fact, you can press pause and do that, and then check your answer. We find out that there were 
100 rabbits. Now that's a lot of rabbits after only four months. But as we know, exponential functions grow very, very quickly. Part C, very similar question. How many rabbits are there after one year? We have to be a little bit careful here. After one year is a different unit of measurement than months. So you have to ask yourself, how many tripling periods were there in a year? Well, since the population triples every month, there were 12 months in a year. So then X has to be 12 because there were 12 tripling periods. So we plug that into our equation, 100 times 3 to the 12th, and this is going to be a big number, we end up with 53,144,100 rabbits. Now, you may think this is ridiculous, and it, it kind of is, because we know that rabbits are not really growing with their population unchecked. There are predators, there is disease, there are limited resources. So it's a good time to point out that while equations are good models for situations, it doesn't mean that they're good models for all time. So maybe this equation would better represent the rabbit population for just a small number of months, because clearly I don't think we're going to see 53 million rabbits running around. Our next example talks a little bit about half-life. It says a substance has a half-life of 24 hours. How much of the substance would remain after one week if the original amount is 829 grams? So a couple key words here. First, I want you to circle half-life. That is going to give us our multiplier. So B is going to be one half. Original amount, remember I said that's the same as starting amount. That's going to be our A value, so we put in 829. And then the X, we have to figure out how many half-life periods have gone by. And since the half-life is 24 hours, which is also one day, and we are looking for how much of the substance remains after one week, we know that there are seven 24-hour time periods in one week. So X is going to be seven. We can now take these values and substitute them into the equation. We have y equals 829, in parentheses, 1 half to the seventh. And just a side note here, as you're typing this into your calculator, you can put in 0.5. That is the same as 1 half. You're going to get the same result. And in fact, that would probably be easier for you to type in. When you're finished, you should get 6.48 grams. And make sure you have a label here. It would be in grams. Let's look at another example that deals with half-life. This one says the half-life of a colony of bacteria is 12 hours. If the initial amount of bacteria is 9,538 grams, what will the population be in six days? So circle that word half-life. That automatically gives you your multiplier. The initial amount, remember I said the word initial is the same as starting, so that's going to be our A, 9,538. And then our X, this is always going to be the tricky part. We have to figure out how many half-life periods there are in six days. Well, since the half-life is 12 hours, that means that in one day we have two 12-hour periods. That means in six days, we would have 12 12-hour 12 periods. Since there's two per day, six times two is 12. So our x is going to be 12. We now take all this, and we substitute that into our equation. So y equals 9,538 times 0.5 to the 12th. And then again, you put this into your calculator and you should get 2.33 grams. So if you haven't noticed, the A and the B are going to be fairly easy quantities to pick out from the problem. It's going to be the X, or the time, the number of half-lives, the number of doubling periods, the number of tripling periods, that's going to be the tricky part in these problems. All right, our last example, we are dealing with the population of a city. So a city doubles in size every 63 years. 
If the population is currently 52,400, what will be the population in 189 years? So doubles. There's our multiplier. B is going to be 2. And this represents growth because our B value is greater than 1. We are starting with 52,400 people. And now we have to figure out how many doubling periods have there been. And so what I would do here is I would say, okay, well, if we have 189 years, how many times does 63 actually go into 189? So we can divide. We could take 189 divided by 63. That gives us 3. Another way to look at this is you could just start listing it out. So you can say, okay, it's going to double after 63. I'll just write this off to the side. So it'll double after 63 years. The next time it's going to double is after 126 years. And then if you add 63 to that, you'll get to 189. So that's another way to calculate that 3. If you're not quite sure how to divide or what to divide, just kind of think about how many doubling periods there were and just start listing it out. So every 63 years, you just add 63 years until you get to the desired number. All right, so now let's plug this into our equation. Y equals 52,000. 400 times 2 to the third. And like we've done before, at this time you can press pause and work things out on your calculator. And hopefully when you did, you got 419,200 people. And again, whenever you're dealing with population of people, if you get a decimal answer when you're calculating things, although this one wouldn't give you one, make sure you always round to the nearest person. This concludes our examples. You are now ready to work on the next practice set, which would um, be Growth and Decay Part 2. Gosh, they're going to be